The gospel of Jesus Christ, the most important message this world has ever known. Now, we can't understand why the gospel is good news until we first understand and apply the bad news. Now, why do I say that we must apply the bad news? Because in order for the bad news to be relevant to the good news, the bad news must be applicable to yourself. The good news is only good news to people that are in need. So here's Paul Washer breaking down what the good news is and why it is our only hope. And if you're here today, tonight, and you don't know Christ, you can throw away everything in your home. You can go feed the poor for the rest of your life and you'll still die and go to hell. Because God is a holy God and he's just God. And to stand in the presence of God and have fellowship with him, you have to have an absolutely perfect record from the moment you were born until the moment you die. You don't have that kind of record. Neither do I. If you died and were judged based on your own merit, you would be found wanting. As a matter of fact, if you took all the best men on the face of the earth and added their virtue together and stood them before God, they would still be found wanting. For this reason, your sins had to be paid for. God is just. He cannot just forgive you. Before he can forgive you, justice must be satisfied. And the only way justice can be satisfied is through the death of the one who has broken God's law. You deserve to die and so do I. But God's son became a man, lived a perfect life that you could never live, and then went to a cross. And on that cross, he bore the sins of his people and every bit of divine wrath of holy justice, of God's punishment toward evil, every bit of it that should be poured out on you and me was poured out on God's Son. God crushed His only begotten Son and His Son willingly submitted to being crushed that as a man, someone might die in your place. Jesus Christ died. He paid for every crime you've ever committed or will ever commit against God. He rose again from the dead and it was God's sign and seal that his death was accepted as payment for your sin. Now Christ is seated at the right hand of God. And you say, what must I do? I will not tell you, pray this little prayer and you'll be saved. But I will tell you this, repent of your sins and believe in Jesus Christ and you will be saved. You say, Brother Paul, how do I know if I've repented? Well, let me ask you a question. Has God worked in your heart in such a way that the sin you once loved, you now hate? And the God you once ignored, you now desire? Those are at least the first fruits of repentance. Now believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. His, his arms are wide. There is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all the testimony given at the proper time. And that testimony is given here tonight that Christ died for your sins and he rose again from the dead and you can be saved. But there will come a time right now. The love of God holds one hand up to heaven and restrains God's wrath. And another hand reaches out to you and pleads with you to come. But I want to warn you one day. That one great obstacle of love will be removed and God will come and he will save his people. But those who have refused to come to love's call, those who have refused Christ, they will be judged. And it will be so terrifying on that day that the Bible says that the great captains and great men of the earth will cry out for the rocks to fall upon them to hide them from the wrath of the Lamb. But until that day, it doesn't matter who you are, doesn't matter what you've done, you can be saved. No one who ever came to Christ was ever cast out. No one. 